It's great to have you all here. It's so great that we can have this time together to have a bit of a conversation around the kitchen table. Because really, we really want to focus on, you know, how do we raise uh, children, equip families in order to be able to help them to love their neighbor. So the first thing I want us to talk about, how do we create a place of love and belonging? Because we want our kids to grow, they need to grow up in that type of environment, don't they? In order to be able to help disciple them, to get them to a point where they can really love uh, their neighbor. So why, why is it important and how do we create that place of love and belonging? Yeah, I think, I suppose the first thing I would say is when we think of home and family, often we think it needs to be perfect. And I think one of the things that we're always celebrating and encouraging that all homes are different, all families are different and unique. So whoever's watching uh, today, I would encourage us to really take that, that actually it's not about building this perfect home. But what you're talking there, Luke, is actually about building strong foundations. And that is why we are passionate about what we do, is actually helping come alongside families to go, you're doing a great job. How can we help strengthen that? And that really is our message, is going, come on. It's making the most of those everyday moments. It's not about being perfect or expert, but about working where, you're, where you are. And home is a great place to start with that. In Compassion, for example, we follow the three Cs. We call it, we're child-focused, we're church-based and we're Christ-centered. And because of that, our programs, the way we deliver them, every child knows that they matter. Their voices are being heard. Letting them know that their voice matters. So I have two children, I have a boy and a girl, and um, I have to consciously include them in the session. Decision-making in the family, for example. It can be something as basic as that. And because of that, it gives them that sense of, you know, I'm, I'm not, even though I'm a child, it gives them that sense of I belong, as in my voice matters, I'm being listened to. One of the reasons why I've been brought into this party is because I've actually got cake with me. Oh, oh see, it. come on. Love so what it. I'm going to do, let me bring in this cake. And you're right, Luke, is so part of the care for the family is the kitchen table project. And yeah, yeah. the big part of that is looking at how we can recognise that parents are the biggest influencers. So Love it. the reason why I say uh, parents is the biggest influencer is so often we look at a child maybe by the average age of 10 the average 10 year old would spend about uh, 21,900 daytime hours at home that's a lot of hours isn't it that's a lot I, I've, I've literally counted the hours that my children are uh, at home with me it's I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old so I'm counting those and then we look at other areas of a child's life and you think of maybe school and you think, actually, there's a big portion of the uh, child's week which is spent at school. And then you look at another big portion of a child's week, which is actually spent sleeping. I know for many parents, we would like that slice to be a lot bigger than it is, <laughs> because we would like them to sleep for a lot longer. And then you look at, I don't know if you've looked at the average eight-year-old social calendar, but they've got ballet, they've got a gardening club, they've got cooking club, they've got yoga, goodness knows what they've got going on in their life. So we look at a portion there, which is maybe uh, other activities. And then you look at this uh, slice here, which is the church. And I'm just going to see if I can actually bring that out for, for you there. Oh, Whoa, oh. Look, this could go horribly wrong there. <laughs> so you look at this slice and you compare it to maybe uh, home, which is over by here. And so often why we are so passionate about helping to equip parents and families to recognize their influence and the opportunities that exist at home is because everything we're doing is looking at equipping parents to make the most on, of that large, and, slice. Pick up that large slice oh i don't know this could get messy couldn't it <laughs> so really everything we're talking about today is really looking at how we equip parents and families for this portion of the cake okay to make the most of the opportunities that exist at home and we are passionate about the local church we're passionate about this yeah, slice yeah. But the reality is, and you're a church leader, Gareth, but it would take the church 421 years to spend the same amount of time with that 10-year-old. I know you're committed to your congregation, but are you committed for the next 421 years? <laughs> so that really is why we are passionate about looking at how we equip parents and families to make the most of the opportunities that exist at home. Mm. And then obviously for, for yourself, Gareth, you know, you're a church leader. You're in, what, what's your thought about creating a, 
an, an environment of love and belonging. You know, how do we do that? How do you do that? I think for me personally, it's where is my home? Where is my home? And I think for me, um, and what we try to do in our family, because you know, as a, as a church leader, um, I try to lead the family, and, mm. and ultimately our home is belonging with God. You know, what does what does it look like to belong to God? What does it look like for our families to belong to God? Um, and it's and it's helping certainly for our son helping him to grow up in a safe and secure place where he knows that he belongs. You know, to, picking up on what you're saying, Gaz, you know, it's messy. You know, families, families are messy and we want our son to know that, um, that in the mess of family life, he belongs and he's loved. Mm. And, and so it's helping um, families in our, in our churches to know that, that all of our children um, are safe and secure. Um, whether it's in the family home, whether it's in the church's home, you know, I want it to be a, a loving place for, for children to belong and a place where they begin to discover for themselves what it means to, be, to belong to God. Mm -hmm. Because they do belong to God. They're created in his image. They're, 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 you know, to be like him, to grow like him. And I want my son and I want the children in our care in our churches to grow in the image and likeness of God, knowing mm -hmm. that first and foremost, they're his. You know, he is their perfect heavenly father. He loves them unconditionally. He loves them in the mess. Um, and in our family, we have a lot of mess. <laughs> Don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> but what practical things, what practical tools could parents maybe consider or think about? Like, we're not going to have all the answers. We're all parents. We're all sat around this table. <laughs> what, what are some tools? What are some practical things that um, parents, caregivers who are watching this maybe could just consider, you know, when they're, yeah. when they're thinking about creating this environment of love and belonging. Mm. Yeah, I, I would say, especially towards like parents and caregivers, is that it's really important to understand that there are hurdles. What are the hurdles in even creating a loving home, in creating a place where our children belong? And sometimes those hurdles are as simple as busy, time. Life is busy. So actually, one of the things I would say to parents all the time is, Actually, it's not about adding more in, but it's about making the most of the everyday moments. Or another hurdle is don't know where to start. And actually, one of the greatest things to do is spend time with our children. And so often we think it needs to look a certain way, but actually just playing together or take actually, rather than jumping in the car to do the school run, actually take a 10 minute walk where you can just spend time talking about life, maybe even praying. They're all great places to start. And then the last thing I would say is really, it is about sowing seed is actually everything we're doing is looking at inspiring a faith that lasts. So it's not just about while they're young and in our own homes. We want to sow seeds into our children that actually when they have their own children, they want to share their faith. Why? Because they've seen a loving home. They've seen a place where they belong and they want to pass that on to their own children. Yeah. Yeah. And really, once children realise that they belong and then out of a place of love, when we're talking about loving their neighbour, actually it's from a place of, where they found it so actually it's an overflow because they found that they found the love of god they found the love and acceptance of a family they want to show their neighbor whether that's in school or their physical neighbor or someone in um zambia mm -hmm. that is showing the love of neighbor and it really does start at home you know one of the things that we, that we do as or we've done as a, as a family and you know we sit around the table and um you know we did this a while back and just so they what are what are the values that we want as a family? We did it as a couple before um, Jacob, our son, our son, arrived. You know, what do we want to build in terms of our family? And now we've brought Jacob into the conversation and mm -hmm. say, well, well, what do we want our family to be like? What are the some of the things that are important? So, absolutely, we want Jesus to be at the center of our family because mm -hmm. you know we're a Christian family. We want Jesus to be at the center. What does that mean? Well, it means that we've started learning some phrases that are really memorable to us as a family. So, one of them, I think, is everybody matters mm. everybody matters and so it's not just in the family but it's recognizing outside of the family and that's thinking about you know school friends for our son it's thinking about people at church it's thinking wider in terms of you know the the, the children that we support from compassion you know the, the two boys that we support it's it's about you know remembering them that they matter that they're a part of our family they're a part of our mm. extended family so so with our son jacob when it comes to um, sort of prayer time at bedtime, it's just like, well, we remember that everyone matters. 
So we pray for Kassane and we pray for Leaky as part of our family unit. So we're trying to build some foundations as a family. And, it, and those foundations we keep coming back to as a family and saying, okay, are we still there with that? You know, Jacob, are we, are we still being fun loving as a family? Yeah. You know, is adventure still a part of our family? And has Jesus been a part of our family this week? Or what, what do we need to do to change? Because Jacob, everyone matters. Yeah. Everyone matters. I think that gives us, or gives those who are watching this, just that maybe a few ideas. It's important that we do create these environments of love and belonging so that with the end goal of hopefully getting to a point where our kids are raised in such a way that they want to love their neighbour. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, and, and get involved in, in the world. So, thank you.